Hey, 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 hey. Hey, what's up? Hey, how are y'all doing tonight? Hey. <laughs> what are they doing? Hey, uh, Woodstock students, how are y'all doing tonight? <laughs> All right. I guess it's getting close to the end of the summer. I mean, I mean, no, no, end of the school year, end of the school year. What was that? Yeah, what was I thinking? So, wow. Hey, um, I've got two things, so y'all get real quiet, real quiet, real quiet. Um, so what, number one is, uh, is I've got to tell you a word about beach camp. Um, yeah, 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 beach camp. Hey, listen, there have been a lot, this is an important announcement about beach camp. Um, there have been a lot of students um, that have, you have signed up and you have, you have marked that you want a certain student to stay in your room, but here's a problem. Watch this, watch this. That student, that friend that you want to stay in your room, they're not signed up yet. We have begun the process today. Now, I need y'all to get, get this out for me. We have begun the process today to place you in rooms. If your friend that you want to, excuse me, what was that? If your friend that you want to stay in your room isn't signed up, then they may not be able to get in your room, all right? So here's what I need you to do. Tonight, about midnight, when I go on and we, we check or I send a text to ask about this, there needs to be a huge influx in, in sign-ups tonight, okay? I need you to contact everyone that you have in your room and say, sign up tonight, okay? Because I'm going to tell you, you got to do it. Yeah, you know what I'm saying? So, hey, and price in, uh, the price is going to increase. It's at 415 right now, and it's going to increase again on, when, are we, when is it? May 1st. May 1st. Two weeks. Away. Don't waste money. Just sign up tonight. May Two weeks. Yeah, you got to do it, all right? Okay, so don't forget about that. Camp is going to be amazing. Um, okay, so the second thing is, tonight is missions night, all right? This is going to be phenomenal. So you are going to hear from our West Virginia team. You're going to hear from our Ireland team. Yeah! Por Portugal team. Yeah! And our Nepal team, okay? Now, now. Now check this out. Before we introduce the first team, um, I want to do something else tonight, okay? Now, several of you, and I, uh, I hope, I don't know who all is going to be here tonight or whatever, but several of you um, end up every year going on additional trips um, outside of our high school ministry trips, okay? Uh, which is really cool. And so what I want to do is uh, for a moment tonight, if you went on any mission trip outside of the four that we do as a high school ministry, I want you to stand up and tell us where you went and uh, so that we can celebrate with you, okay? So go ahead, go ahead, stand up. Who is it? Who? Anaya, Anaya who else? Who else? Stand up, stand up, stand up. Over here, stand up, stand up, stand up, stand up, stand up. Who else? Okay, over there, I can't see you. Where did you go? Central Asia, both of you? Awesome, awesome. Give it up, Central Asia. I love it, I love it. Awesome. Uh, Anaya, why, why are you sitting down? You can, yeah, well, that's okay. You can still eat. I know, right? Epicenter snack time. All right, tell everybody where you went. Cape Verde. Awesome. Give it up, give it up. Fun, fun, fun. Very cool. Okay, I can't see out there. Oh, oh right here. Jeremy. Where? St. Simon's Island. Give it up. Give it up. Give it up. Give it up. Awesome. Awesome. Okay, who else? Who else? Who else? We had more. Who else? Who else? Who else? Anyone else? Huh? <laughs> Your kitchen. That's right. Daytona, that's awesome. And we had some other students go other places as well. Anybody else here? Anybody? I want to recognize you. Okay, cool, 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 cool. Awesome, awesome. So here, here's the purpose of this, students. Listen, missions 
is so vital. It's not about one week, y'all. It's about living a lifestyle of being on mission. Short-term trips are so important because God really does work in a special, special way uh, on a short, short-term trip that ends up having long-term results. And that's why we advocate um, uh, uh, mission trips on a short-term basis. And so we're putting together a really cool strategy and some new places and all of that as we go forward. And so next year is going to be really, really, really vital to the trajectory of our missions understanding and what we're involved is as a high school ministry going forward. And so you're going to get a little sneak peek of that tonight, and it's just going to be a lot of fun. So what we want to do right now is I want you to give it up for our first team, which is our West Virginia team. Would you? Come on up. Come on up. Come on up. Come on up, come on up, come on up. Hey, give it up for Campbell. He's like bringing me coffee up here. Oh my goodness, dude. <laughs> That's incredible. So, okay, so what we're going to do is I want you guys, this team right here, I mean, there's a bug in this. I mean, look at that. Seriously, look at that. Oh, is that coffee green? Yeah. So, sorry, I was kind of thrown off and everything. So, I'm going to take a look at that. So, so this is the West Virginia team. And uh, Scott and Kelly were phenomenal leaders. Jen and I had the op- awesome opportunity to travel with them. But I want you to take just a couple of seconds, and I want you to uh, pay attention to the video screen.
I just want to add real quick. We um, we go on these trips thinking that we're going to go and bless these poor, unfortunate people. But um, as you heard, they walked away with blessings of their own. And um, the baptism that we saw was the first baptism of Rebuild Ministry. And um, that's just the beginning of things that are about to start happening there. So we are super excited to um, go back and see what God wants to do through us. So this is uh, just a really, really cool thing. Like I said, I wish we would all get a chance to go on like all the trips um, because like I said, for all of you that's been on a mission trip before, I mean, there's just a bonding that takes place that, you know, you may walk into a, to a new ministry or into a big ministry like this and feel like you're all alone. But once you go on a mission trip or camp or SLU, when you spend a whole week with someone, the bond that you have, you never get over. And so it's just really, really cool to, uh, to really have gotten to know um, each of these, and then the same is true for your for your uh, trips as well. You really have that community, and I, I just want to say um, for each of our uh, team leaders, but uh, on this one specifically, and then we'll do this throughout throughout the night. But uh, would you guys just give it up for Scott and Kelly leading this team? So phenomenal job, phenomenal job. And you're gonna hear um, you're gonna hear a lot more about uh, West Virginia. Uh, the need and the way that this fits in with a, a new strategy that we're really kind of putting together, and then also, also um, we're going. I'm gonna. I can't. I can't even. I, I've got to say this and everything. So one of the things that we're gonna do with our um, our mission trips going forward is we're gonna have a year around approach um, to our teams and the community and all of that stuff. And so you'll hear more about it later. But um, but I'm just really excited about this team and really thankful for you guys for the uh, just your commitment and just the love for these students. I mean, it was just really, really cool. So we just want to take a moment, and um, I'm going to pray over um, each of them, just the, this team, and I want each of you guys to pray um, to God along um, with us as, as we pray. And let's just ask God for a few things tonight, okay? Father, in the name of Jesus, I, uh, I am so thankful for this West Virginia team. And God, I just want to pray a few things over them. Number one, God, I pray for Huntington. God, I pray for the work that has begun. Dear God, that town needs a touch from the king. Father, I pray that you would rid that place of, of heroin and drugs and prostitution and the evil that is occurring even now as we're talking to you, God. Lord, I pray, Father, for Paul and for his precious wife and for Rebuild and for SCORE International. God, I pray, Lord, that you would do a, a mighty work and help us to be a part of this. And Lord, in the name of Jesus Christ, I pray for each of these students. God, I pray, Father, the, the bond, the community that you have given them on this trip, that it will last. God, it's not going to be something that just happens for a week or two after the trip. But this is a bond in a family, in a community that will never be broken. Father, what you taught them and showed them and what you, they were able to see in most of them for the very first time, God, never allow that to leave them. God, third of all, I pray, God, that, that they would in return make sure that everyone in this ministry feels that community as they feel. That, Lord, you would have touched them in such a way with community that they will not allow any person to come into this ministry not feeling that. And Lord, I pray also that they go back to their schools and they share this life-changing message of Jesus just like they shared in Huntington. May you do a work in Woodstock that we're praying for in Huntington and right here. Thank you for them, God. Thank you for Scott. Thank you for Kelly. Such a servant's hearts. Lord, just so humble, just, just willing to do whatever it takes to fulfill this vision, God. Thank you for them. God, I pray that you bless them beyond anything they could think or even imagine. God, thank you for what you've done on this team and in this ministry. And we pray this in Jesus' name. Amen. Will you give it up for our West Virginia team? Thank you. Y'all can go off to the right. Uh -huh. Go out this way. Uh -huh. awesome. awesome. And they are pretty strong, by the way. They are pretty strong with the arm wrestling. Uh, so. <laughs> yeah, 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 yeah. Okay. Hey, while they are exiting, um, Ireland team is up next. If our Ireland team, if you guys will head to this side of the stage and join us up here with your fearless leader, Jay Willis, and Doug, Christy, Whitney. I'm sorry? Christy, I believe one of those. Mm -hmm. All right, yeah, you guys just come on. 
Come on, come on. Come on, come on, come on, come on, come on. All right. So this year, the Iowa trip was a little different. Um, it's been a similar trip year to past year gone. Um, this year, they got to actually help with Ludie Creech's new church plant, which is super exciting to see him branch out, start his own church. So I'm excited to hear what all took place in Ireland. But before we hear what took place, will you guys turn your attention to that screen? We're going to see their video. Ever to Ireland, and um, 
yeah, again, just the weather was really, really bad. And we had, like, set plans for each and every, like, day as we were there. But since the rain and the wind didn't uh, help us at all, we kind of were like, okay, well, let's go to plan B. And, you know, that we had to persevere through the ra uh, wind and rain. But um, there was a specific, specific moment um, on Monday, uh, or Tuesday, early in the week, um, where it was me and a couple of the girls and um, Matthew. Um, we were talking to this group of uh, people, and they were and in Ireland, they are hardcore Catholic. So we were just, like, you know, telling them what we were there for and uh, that we were Bible-believing Christians. And we, they were kind of, they were really interested and had a bunch of questions for us. And, like, you know, just me right there in the moment, I was just like, wow, like, they know this stuff. And we were battling back and forth, back and forth. With we had questions for them. They had questions for us. And just, we were there in the rain, in the wind, for two hours. Tough, but however, walking back or looking back, um, just leaving that moment, like we weren't there to just say, "Hey, please come to our side," pretty much, and like we're not Jesus over here, we're just followers of Jesus, and we were there just to plant seeds along the way. So, and that moment for me and the team kind of like helped, like you know, throughout the week with the wind and the rain, just persevere.
shit. <laughs> but uh, yeah. Uh, before the trip, I will admit that I was hardcore atheist. I did not want to go to Ireland at all. But uh, ended up going anyway, of course. And um, when I when I arrived, first couple days, I was like, okay, this is Ireland. It's cool, I guess. But um. But uh, eventually, uh, I believe it was on a Thursday, uh, someone by the name of Zach Stewart decided to come talk to me. <laughs> and then, of course, other people helped me along the way, but he was the one that asked me if I wanted to get saved. And sure enough, I said yes. And mainly because I was like, I had like a inner battle going on, and I, I ended up saying yes. I was tired of all the negativity because before the trip, I was in all I was always in a negative, depressed mood. I I wondered if people would care if I even if I even was alive. Which yeah, but anyway. I got saved, and actually, Sunday I got baptized. So yeah. I'm really glad. <laughs> <laughs> but yeah, I formed good bonds with these people, and I love them to death. Yeah, so it was an incredible week to see this. He spoke more to me between Thursday when he got saved and Saturday on the plane coming home than he did from September to Thursday of that week. And he made a whole lot of new friends, so it was a cool experience. Um, I'll just say, probably not going back to Ireland going forward. Um, Ludi confirmed it, Eric confirmed it, and um, you know I think God has seasons for everything. I think this church and this youth group has made a tremendous impact in Ireland, and we will go forward in some other ways, but... Um, Students blow me away. I heard a student a while ago say, if you're thinking about it, just go. I'm not even sure you have to think about it. In Matthew, Jesus said the harvest is plentiful, but the laborers are few. He doesn't ask if you feel like go and go. He says go. So a short-term mission trip is there for you to go. So you know, go. Love you guys. So, um, yes, <laughs> um, um, this is what it's about, is lives have been changed, right? Um, golly, we've been praying a lot for you, tons, 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 so excited, just the beginning, um, Jay, um, mo probably most of you guys have been impacted by him in uh, some way, and um, he has done so much for this ministry, and uh, I know there's this being kind of a, cl a closure as far as this trip, so special uh, for him, and with uh, Matthew uh, getting to go again this year, and uh, so what I want you guys to do is I want you to honor, um, oh my goodness, okay, I'm good, I'm good, I want you guys to honor him well tonight. And before you leave, I just want you to go up to Jay and, um, and just say thank you, all right? And then I want you to give him a big hug, okay? A big hug. Um, <laughs> um, but this was a very special team, and, uh, and, and it's just going to be really cool. And so Jen's going to pray over them, and I just ask God to, to move. So would you guys please join us in, um, in praying for them? And also, let's continue to pray specific oh, can, okay can I just say one other thing I'm so sorry um oh, thank you thank you so you know there's a whole thing uh about you know mission trips and like you know we'll and I'm not saying hey let's just open everything up and and say hey you know if you're you know you know let's let you know every atheist come on a trip right but let me just tell you this is why this is why you have to always look at situations 
And Jay and I prayed a ton and we talked and we just knew, I mean, listen, when you're in a tough situation, you have to make a, a, a decision that's, that's uncomfortable or just make a decision or whatever. Once you hear from God, and, and Jay heard from the Lord, Todd heard from the Lord, Ludi heard from the Lord, I really feel I heard from the Lord, and the answer was yes. Make the tough decisions in your life. When you know God has, has said, spoken to you, make that decision and go with confidence. Because I'm going to tell you, extreme, crazy, awesome results will come when God speaks, and then you just go with it. Even when it maybe doesn't even make sense, just go with it when you know that it's God that has spoken to you. Um, join us in praying for them. God, you are so good. And um, God, I'm just seeing in all the opportunities to serve you and hearing other testimonies right now of this um, Ireland trip. God, you are at work. And God, we are just humbled and grateful for the opportunity to be used. And I pray that this impact goes way beyond this week. And God, I know because of who you are, that it will. And I just pray right now for long prayer. God, I pray for Ludi and Barbara and their sweet, sweet family as you have called them to that country. And it has not been, it has not been easy. It is a hard culture. They are hardcore Catholics. And God, I just pray that you would soften the hearts of those people and they would see the genuine, passionate love that you um, indwell inside them. God, that you would, um, you would just tear down the walls that they face day in and day out. And God, I Pray you continue to send other teams to come alongside them as they um, continue their work. And God, thank you for letting us be a part of that country for eight years. God, we are praising you right now for what you did in Matthew's life. And God, I pray you continue to draw guys around him that will love him and draw him closer to you. And God, we will not just high five him and leave him alone, but God, we will disciple him. And God, we can't wait to see what you have in store in his life. And God, we love you so much in your amazing name, I pray. Amen. 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 You guys are awesome. You guys awesome. Get head off that stage. Awesome. Thank you so much, Ireland team. All right, Portugal team, you guys are up next. If you guys will join us, you guys are, oh, already, already. Join us up here on stage. I think I wasn't supposed to say that. <laughs> hey, what's up? What's up? Uh, <laughs> Right, Mark Cameron and AJ Ruff. Who else? Other leader? Lori Gray, Alan Millen. They were the leaders for this team, and they were phenomenal. Mark is here. Yeah. I, I, thought, you, I thought you said Mark Cuban. <laughs> Sorry. <I> Sorry. <laughs> Mark Cuban is here. Um, all right, hey, before we hear from you guys, we want to see your video, so you guys turn your attention to the screen. Okay. To say that I'm really freaking excited to go to Portugal. Can't stop, won't stop falling into you. Alright, alright. 
it just be like that. So 
to the cafe where we were supposed to be because um, we were waiting for everybody. And we just prayed over them. They, uh, I asked them, or one of the girls that was with us asked them um, uh, what we could pray for them for, and all of them said their families. So I prayed over them for that, and we, like, exchanged Snapchats, Instagrams, and everything, so we still talk. Um, so that was the first day, and we met up the second day um, because that was kind of like we start a relationship and then start sharing the gospel with them. So, here we go. So, at the end of the first day, we were just kind of hanging out in the cafe and we had to go and we didn't really want to go. But my dad came up and was like, Well, why don't we be back up tomorrow? And I did not expect him to say that. I thought he was going to say, like, No, we need to go. <laughs> and so, that was really cool. And, um, like Becca said, we got to go meet up with them again the next day. So, we just met them at the beach again. And, um, our the GCI program, like my dad was talking about, is that you meet someone and you just establish a relationship and you get to pray over them and just meet them where they're at. And then the next time, Lord willing, you get to meet up with them and you get to share a true story from the word of God. And then Lord willing, go into a conversation about the gospel. And so while they did get to talk about the gospel the first day, it gave them a, a night to um, think about it and to just really let the Holy Spirit work in their hearts. And then the next day we got to go and we just um, met them on the beach and at first, we didn't want them to feel like we were only talking to them just to talk, tell them about Jesus. So they had a bunch of cards out, so we just sat down and started playing card games. And um, they were about to switch up the game, and Becca goes, well, hold on, can I tell you a story first? And then she got to tell a story of Jesus and the um, sinful woman about how he forgave her sins. And then I got to share a little bit of my testimony, and she shared a little bit of hers. We all kind of did. And then we got to go straight into the gospel, and it blew their minds. They had never heard anything like it before, and they had so many questions about, like, the Big Bang versus creation, or why did God even make us, or how do you know God's real, or, or how— it was just, if God created us, who created God? And they had some amazing questions that we actually— um, Emily had her Bible, and so we got to use that to use Scripture to answer their questions, and we still talk to them on a daily basis, so we established that friendship. We're encouraging them to go Durban, and um, I was even talking to Laura this morning um, and just asking how I could continue to pray for her, and so that's what it's about. And so while none of them came to know Christ, the seeds were planted, and Lord willing, I would love to see them again in our next trip that we go, maybe be able to meet back up with them and just be able to follow them and continue to get to know them through social media and um, just love on them. So that's really cool. Hi, my name is Madeline. So on one of the last days, we went to this Catholic church, but um, c Catholicism there is very different than it is here. And so the church we went to was called Fatima, and this was one of the hardest days for our team spiritually because in this church they had idol worshiping. It was like kind of a anyone could go to see. So we wanted to see like what they truly believed, and so so we would be able to better help them and be able to tell the gospel to them more efficiently. So in this place, there's a lot of idol worshiping, and one of the hardest things that we saw was, um, so there's this, I don't know how many miles was it, like a really long, yeah, a quarter mile um, <laughs> of uh, like hard rock. It, it was a giant line, and on it, you start from the beginning, and they would walk on their knees all the way down in order to hurt themselves so God would forgive them because they just did not see that Jesus already suffered for them and forgave them for their sins, and that's all they needed. But they they thought that you needed to hurt yourself, kind of, or to be more sacrificial to God in order for him to forgive you. And that was really hard for us to watch, and um, we just saw how broken it is there, and it really broke our hearts for them, and it just showed us how much we need to pray for them, and how much the gospel is needed in this place, and how Satan is working with this religion against um, our beliefs, and against God, and keeping them from believing in the gospel. M many of them had never even heard the gospel when we asked them what they believed in. They had never heard anything like it before, and it was just really eye-opening to see that in a place that I would think they have access to Bibles, but they have never heard the true gospel before. Just to add on to what 
that uh, Madeline shared, they also have an area where you can go and light a candle if you've got a prayer request. And they have um, different objects. So they would have a candle that's in the shape of a house if you have a prayer about your house. They had, um, what else did they have? They had babies. They, so if you had a prayer request for a baby, they had these little wax babies that you could buy and then go burn as a prayer request. It was very, very disturbing very sad as I'm sitting here listening to you guys and the other teams and the teams that's going to about to come up uh, what's really cool is like in a lot of mission trips students uh, they share the gospel once they're on the trip but as I'm watching all these teams come up I'm seeing students that actively consistently share their faith here at school and they're taking that and they're being on mission and God's just driving it even more and more down deep in their heart and doing that back here. And um, it's just really cool. And all these teams so far and the one that you're about to see as well, uh, I, keep, I keep hearing community and I keep seeing community. And so I cannot stress enough the importance of being at some time throughout the year of being on a one week trip, whatever that looks like, um, camp mission trips, SOU, what it is, to make sure that you have that community because it, it doesn't stop after that. And um, so we're really excited about what the Lord has done in, in all of your lives uh, on this particular trip. We're excited to see uh, this new strategy that I keep talking about, um, specifically with Word of Life in Portugal and the great need um, that is there. And so Jen's going to pray over them as, again, uh, or pray over this team. And so would you join us as, uh, as we pray? God, we are thankful that um, even though the darkness seems overwhelming, God, you are light and you have defeated the darkness. And God, as I heard over and over from testimonies of these students, God, it is a dark place. Um, God, they are confused. They have been given false teaching. And God, I just pray right now that you would stir, uh, stir something. There, God, you are bigger than that. And, God, I just pray that you would continue to use our teams going forward um, just to start a revolution. God, we pray to a God who can do exceedingly and abundantly more than we could ask or imagine. And, God, I pray for word of life as they host camps. God, because of what these students, the field that they plowed, and, God, they planted seeds in hearts. God, that they would see the greatest camps ever this summer um, because of the just of how you use our students. And I just pray you continue that fire in their hearts that it's the last few weeks of school and it's easy to check out. God, I pray you just keep the fire in their hearts for the last few weeks of school, the mission field you've called them until the end of May. And God, you would use them beyond their wildest um, imagination. And we just love you, God. We give you all the praise and glory. In your name I pray. Amen. Amen. We have one Something final team, the Nepal team. Where y'all at? Y'all give it up for the Nepal team. So, so, so when we came, um, when I came a couple of years ago, or on, going on three now, I guess, um, I really felt that part of our mission strategy at some point, some time, was going to uh, build on itself and reach this, this point of a trip basically called an extreme trip. Okay, and on these extreme trips, um, just for the nature of it, is very limited. And um, I was just praying, and through that, and literally Nick uh, came up and started talking to me about Nepal. We met, I have no idea how many times, uh, over like two years. And the Lord had placed this on his heart four years ago. And to watch all of this come together, it has been absolutely um, amazing. And um, I can't wait for you guys to hear from them. But first, check out, uh, check out the screen. in 
just as I feared, the pictures don't do the Himalayan mountains justice. And um, our brief stories tonight won't do our trip justice either. Um, I will have a tendency to like preach on this trip for an hour, so I've got like very specific things, and you can just cut me off if you keep going. Um, um, as, as Eric mentioned, um, this is something the Lord laid on my heart more than four years ago. Um, and I firmly believe it took four years of me very fervently praying for him to break me to the point where I was ready for this opportunity. Um, as Eric mentioned, he was talking about wanting to do an extreme trip. Um, I wasn't really sure what he meant by that, but I thought extreme, that sounds cool to me. Um, at this point, I'm a little less passionate about extreme and completely on fire for taking the gospel to the unreached. Um, and if that's how we're going to define extreme, uh, then I am, I'm all about that. Um, if you caught the stats in the video, um, that's what we were introduced with, with our mission partner when we got into Kathmandu. Um, you saw there's a huge part of the world, um, over 40% of the world, that we don't really think about a lot that we don't spend a lot of our prayer time focused on them. And they are all, every child in that video, heading straight to hell because no one, we have not taken the name of Jesus to them. Um, these guys learn very quickly. I'm a pretty emotional person, so I'm going to hand this off pretty quickly. Um, I'm going to let these guys... <coughs> share um, and answer just a few questions I have for them, but, you know, as I said countless times as we prepared for this trip, uh, starting last summer, in 2018, if people are unreached, there's a very good reason, and uh, I think these guys now know firsthand why these people are unreached as we think about just what we dealt with physically, trekking with backpacks on six to eight hours a day, or more a couple of times. Um, to get to a few hundred people or fewer who are every bit as much in need of the gospel as we are, right? Um, cultural barriers that we could spend our entire lives trying to understand and still come up short and religious barriers that, um, you know, when uh, I forget who was speaking on the Portugal team about seeing people seeing idols in the Catholic Church when we went through the Hindu and Buddhist temples. Um, it was like Paul's words in Romans that the Lord gave them over to the lusts of their heart had come alive and we were walking through his letter. Um, so I'm going to let these guys share answers to a few questions. I'll, I'll hush. I will, I will simply say that um, you know, I, I challenged these guys with how they were going to come back, and I'll tell you my account as I come back. Um, I, I hope I remain as faithful to it as Joshua and Caleb when they came back from Canaan, that this place is not too difficult, it's not too dark, but it is so difficult and so dark that only the Lord will do it, that only the Lord can penetrate. Um, we could stand up here and tell hours' worth of stories about the way the Lord is revealing himself in ways that we don't see in the U.S., pretty much through dreams, visions, things that are almost unbelievable if they didn't line up so emphatically with the Word of God and what we see in Scripture. So um, with that said, um, I guess Brandon first. Um, I'll ask, how, how are you different today than you were before we went on this trip, and what has the Lord done in your life through this experience? Um, okay, so one thing that I would say that I'm definitely different now than I was before I went on this trip, um, I think the biggest thing would be prayer. I, um, it was so cool when we were on that trip. Everything, we prayed a lot, and everything that we prayed for was really cool to see. Uh, when we prayed for something, like, God answered it, and sometimes you don't always see that, and it was really cool. Like, we'd be praying for strength on the trail, and then next thing you know, we'd all have strength. It was, it was just really cool, everything we prayed for, to see how God answered that. 
throughout the whole trip, and I think now definitely I'm more comfortable praying, and uh, my faith in and through prayer has grown tremendously, and also, um, what was I going to say? Oh, um, I think God kind of helped me to recognize my purpose as far as uh, how it connects to sharing the gospel with the lost, and one thing that really stuck with me after the trip and just throughout the trip was that um, I mean, we as believers are the ones that have to go and share the gospel. We talk about missions all the time. We say, oh, well, there's missionaries who spend their whole lives living in some foreign country, and the people here, and we don't have to go. Other people can do it. And it really just hit me hard through the trip that, like, we're the ones that are supposed to go because if nobody goes, then who's going to tell them? Like, we're the ones that have to go <laughs> to the whole world, just anywhere. Whoever doesn't know, we have to go and share because otherwise they're not going to know. So. Awesome. Um, so we talked a lot about um, unreached people through all the prep. I, I think that's um, in probably the two minutes that I just spoke, you can tell that is what my heart burdens for. But I will ask you, uh, Will Franklin, like, how has your perspective on unreached people kind of changed? If you think back to all, all that we did through the prep and then the actual experience of the trip itself. Yeah, so um, I have to say that going on this trip was one of the most eye-opening and rewarding experiences of my life. And part of that was because we were going into an unreached region which, um, as Nick has talked about, basically means that the people there don't know about Jesus because nobody's told them, and they don't have access um, to the resources that we do. So, I mean, we have the privilege of living in one of the most evangelized nations in history and one of the most evangelized states and cities in the most evangelized nation. It's, like, crazy. I mean, there are churches every few miles, so we're so used to hearing about the gospel and hearing about um, people who, who, have, who know about the Lord. And traveling to Nepal, this is just not the case there, which is heartbreaking. And so there was definitely some culture shock, I think, for me, traveling to a nation where um, nobody knew about Jesus. It was just a foreign name on their lips. And so I think growing up, um, I heard the term unreached people, and I heard about what that could mean, but I think I thought of it more as like a, a distant possibility, if that makes sense, sort of like they're probably out there, people that, that don't know about the Lord, but somebody else will take care of that. And that was just kind of my mindset before going on this trip. And just to echo what Brandon was saying, like, we are that someone <laughs> that's supposed to go and to take the gospel to these people. And I think my view of unreached people changed from a distant possibility to a present reality. It is very real that there are people who have never heard of Jesus and not only is it a present reality, it's a pressing reality. And so, um, you know, it's our, it's our job as the church, it's our job as believers to take the gospel to these people. Awesome. I know we're running short on time. I'll, I'll, get, I'll get one more here. Um, Davis. Goliath. Every, everyone came back with a trail name. I, I urge you to ask everyone. We won't have time to share everything. You should ask these guys. I'll say before we're at, you need to ask these guys to take some time to share with you what the Lord did with them. You also need to ask them what a squatty potty is and ask them what their trail name is, and I'll leave it at that. <laughs> Davis, what did the Lord do in your life during this trip? How, how did it impact you? That's a really hard thing um, for me. Just these past couple of days, um, you know, just to get in the one to two minute um, explanation for sure, but I'd say it was the morning of day three of trekking. Um, got up, and me, Will Franklin, and Luke went to this really cool spot, um, and we just started praying, and before that point, I, you know, I didn't have any expectations going into the trip at all, um, and the Lord really, really, really broke me, um, and we we're on this spot where you could just see everything for as far as you could see, and um, the Lord broke me 
so much. I was just sobbing with my face, you know, on the ground and calling out to the Lord, you know. Um, big thing I struggled with was why me? Why this trip? Um, when there are so many other more qualified people. Um, but the Lord really used that to really break me on the trip. And um, it was a huge moment where I just decided to give everything in my life, every aspect of my life um, to him. And it, people, you know, say life changing and I feel like it's super overused sometimes, but it truly, truly, truly was life changing. And um, just the Lord from that point on answering prayer like you wouldn't believe and showing himself and the Holy Spirit's presence um, after that point was so amazing. And um, at one point, I think it was that day we were walking and um, Ben B sector was like, guys, we really need to start praying for um, Portugal trip and all the other trips going on. And we just took about 30 minutes, I feel like it was, praying. And one of the biggest things that was really cool for us and all the other trips that we prayed for was um, Hillsong United's song called Shadow Step. And um, as we were praying, we would pray the Lord would go ahead of us and the Holy Spirit would go ahead of us. Um, and that he would just move in ways before we even got to where we were going that we couldn't even imagine. And he really proved himself and showed himself in, through that. Awesome. Well, I know it is, um, like, I can't talk about this without challenging everyone in this room. It's just not, not possible. Um, I, I know it's unlikely that every person in this room will physically go to some place where there are unreached people. Um, though it would change the entire city of Woodstock and maybe the entire state of Georgia if just every person in this room did. I, I really do believe that. But I, I will challenge you with this. Jay, when he was up here, mentioned uh, the words of Jesus that the harvest is plentiful, but the laborers are few. Jesus' very next statement, it's the only thing he specifically tells us to pray for Think about that in his entire ministry. He tells us specifically, pray for laborers. Pray for laborers. Pray to the Lord of the harvest to send laborers into the harvest. Because you can't pray that without being willing to go yourself. Right? And think about what he's saying. He, he implies that the gospel doesn't need any help. Once it's out there, he doesn't say pray that the gospel will be effective once it's out there. Pray. No, no, no. Even Paul writes about it. Some of us plant, some of us water the seeds that others have planted, but it is the Lord that reaps the harvest. And I think that is my biggest takeaway from this thing is what do our prayer lines look like? Because three weeks later, I'm still waking up in the middle of the night and with the names and seeing the faces of that little boy, Suman, seeing the face of a man named Jerlama, that I'm probably butchering how you pronounce his name, that I got to share the gospel with on Easter Sunday. And him and his entire family and everyone in his village never heard the name of Jesus before, and they're all, they're all heading straight to hell without us being the church, without us being the laborers. Um, I think you heard it from these guys as well. So that's what I will leave you with. Do you pray for the lost? Do you pray for the laborers to go into the harvest? And are you willing to be the laborer that goes into the harvest? Y'all stay up here. So. So what we're going to do is, uh, it's almost 10 after, so this is what we're going to do. I'm going to pray, and as soon as I pray, if you have to leave, okay, some of you have to leave, that's totally cool, go ahead and slip out. I'm going to ask you to do it quietly, as quiet as you can, um, but for the rest of you, if you're able to stay, we're going to sing one song, and we're just going to worship God for what he's done tonight. Now here's what I want to say, and then I'm going to pray for them, and then you stand, you want to come up here, you can just cry out to God. 
Um, as you saw in there, there's one little quote. It said, most of us are looking for the second coming of Jesus Christ when so many in other parts of the world, they've never even heard of the first. So this, this ministry, this is yours. You're taking ownership. You're taking the gospel and you just took the gospel around the world. And so what we're going to press in tomorrow morning is taking that gospel message, that life-changing gospel message to that friend that sits in front of you, that sits beside you, sits behind you, those that you walk past every day that you don't even know. Because the majority of them, they are just as lost as others around the world. Their only hope is the only hope for those in Nepal, in Portugal, in Ireland, in West Virginia. And that is the hope of Jesus Christ. This is yours. Let's go. Father, in the name of Jesus, thank you for these men. God, thank you for Nick. God, we pray, Father, for them and what they've seen, what they've heard. God, I pray that it has impacted the lives of every person here tonight. God, I pray, Father, that you would help these men, Lord, take this message with them every moment of their life as they continue to pray for those in Nepal that they've seen and they heard and that God, they will be able to take it back one day soon. God, we pray for the unreached. We pray for those that have heard millions of times but still have yet to follow Christ. God, will you just send an awakening? God, tonight begin a movement where we don't care about time. We don't care what we're doing after the service. Lord, that we literally ask you to replace all of us with all of you. This is our time. This is the moment in history that, Father, you have chosen for us to be here. This is the moment in time that you've chosen for us to be the age that we are, to live in the city that we live in, go to the school that we go to, Father not just for education, not just because our parents had a job here, Father, but because you, through your sovereignty, Lord, through your divinity, God, you, Lord, had it for us to be here. This is our time. This is ours. This is ours. God, let us dedicate and surrender our lives. And Lord, any student here tonight, Lord, that doesn't know you, please let them ask a student next to them tonight and say, I need Jesus. And for every believer here, God, help us to be radical followers of you. If we lose it all, but you gain glory, that's what we want. Thank you for what you're doing here tonight, and we pray this in Jesus' name. Amen.